hello everyone. My name is Makeda Valletta, also known as The Body Scientist. And um, in case you don't know me, I am a personal trainer, a strength and conditioning specialist, um, a USA Olympic weightlifting coach, and a sports nutritionist certified by the ISSN. And um, I'm also a pole dance instructor, a dancer and a former athlete. Um, and I have a background in exercise and sports science. That's what my uh, academic studies were in. Um, so with that being said, this video is going to be about hydration, okay? The lovely topic and very important topic of hydration. So a lot of people think oftentimes in the summertime when it's really hot and there's you know, a huge heat wave and it's so hot out, on the news they tell people um, make sure you drink a lot of water, keep drinking water, drink lots of water. Um, and also a lot of my clients will tell me that, you know, they drink a couple of gallons of water a day and um, they think that's a good thing. And there's a couple things about that. First of all, when you're actually in a state of dehydration, you need more than water to rehydrate, okay? If you go to the hospital for dehydration, they do not give you water. They give you a saline fluid that has carbohydrates, glucose, and it has um, electrolytes in it, like sodium and potassium, things like that. When we are in a state of dehydration, in, in order to get water back into our muscles, because water is stored in our muscles as well, in order to get it back in our muscles, we need carbohydrates. This is the reason why bodybuilders, when they get close to competition, they go on a low carb diet what they're basically doing is dehydrating themselves. So they can get that super shredded look. They want all of the water sucked out of their muscles. So they go on a very low carbohydrate diet, which causes that to happen. So they get the look. But performance wise, it is very detrimental. Because when we do any type of physical activity, whether it be anaerobic or aerobic, and you can check out my YouTube videos on anaerobic and aerobic exercise, whether it is power, endurance, strength, doesn't matter. Our muscles utilize carbohydrate as fuel. And our brain uses carbohydrates as fuel. Fat is also a fuel, a very important fuel. And um, depending on the metabolic system that's being used at the moment, um, our bodies tap into the fat after the carbohydrates has been depleted. I'm sorry, I'm looking around, I'm, I'm waiting for my dad to train him. So I thought that was him, but it's not. Um, anyhow, getting back to the topic, what was I saying about the carbohydrates in the muscles? Um, yes, so physical activity. Our, our muscles use carbohydrates as fuel, and once that's depleted, once our blood glucose is depleted, so the carbohydrate that's floating around in our blood, once that is depleted, then, um, our body top taps into our muscle glycogen. And the muscle glycogen is the stored glucose in the muscles. Glucose is stored in our muscles as glycogen, okay? Um, and then once that's depleted, then it often will use fat as a fuel. So it kind of depends on the metabolic uh, pathway that's being used. Metabolism is a complex biochemical process, and it all depends on how much muscle you have in the first place, how much fat you have in the first place, how much fat you have, what kind of physical activity you're doing, what types of macronutrients and micronutrients you're eating and the timing of it. So all of that plays a role with metabolism, okay? It's not, it's not as simple as just calories in equals calories out and that's how you lose weight and gain weight, no, okay? Um, so when we are in a state of, state of dehydration, you need more than just water. You need something with carbohydrates and electrolytes, okay? Um, another thing is that in the summertime, I see a lot of people or, you know, not just in the summertime, but for some reason, people think that the more you sweat, the more fat you're burning. So, you know, like sitting in a sauna, okay, you sweat, you sweat, you sweat. Uh, or if you're working out outside in the heat with a hoodie on, and so you're sweating more, so you think, oh, I'm burning more fat. But that's not necessarily true. The sweating has nothing to do with how much fat you're burning. It's just your body releasing water and electrolytes. It's, it's your body is dehydrating. You need to rehydrate. It doesn't have to do with how much fat you're burning, okay? Um, and when we, dehydration can cause some serious issues. Also, drinking too much water can be bad. 
because when we drink too much water, it can dilute your electrolytes, okay? And then when your electrolytes become diluted, it can cause almost like water poisoning, something called hyponatria, which is way too much water, electrolytes become um, diluted, okay? So drinking two, three, four gallons of water a day, I don't think is a good idea. I don't believe that we need to drink that much water, okay? I think a lot of people who are on the health kick who want to drink gallons of water every day are exaggerating it and going too far someplace that can cause more issues, okay? But definitely if it's hot outside and it's hot and humid or you're outside doing a workout in the heat um, or you're doing a workout in a hot ass room, you need, it. and if you're just working out for like more than 30 minutes intensely, you need to be putting some simple carbohydrates into your body so that your muscles can utilize it as fuel. It's ideal to use as much blood glucose as possible because the more you tap into your blood glycogen, it really depletes you. So this is also the reason why after we are done with a physical workout, you need to replenish carbohydrates back into your system so your body can rebuild the muscle glycogen and you have it for the next day so you're not dying tomorrow. Okay. Also, um, sodium and potassium are also extremely important for hydration. And, um, you know, hypertension is linked to having too much sodium. A lot of times people with hypertension are told to cut, cut out the sodium. But studies have shown that cutting out the sodium doesn't do much for hypertension patients. And really what the problem is, is not that they need to cut out sodium, it's that they need to add more potassium. It has to do with the balance of sodium and potassium. And a lot of people now are not getting enough potassium and are overloaded with sodium, especially if you're eating like regular um, processed foods and stuff like that, which have a lot of, not only do they have a lot of salt and sodium, but they have it in a form, you know, um, that's not what we need, okay? We want to get our salt from uh, like minerals, you know? So like getting, um, I get like, what is it, like ham sea salt, okay, that come with the the natural minerals and everything that comes with the salt. When we start isolating things, that's when it causes problems. So having a whole bunch of salt by itself, you know, sodium chloride, that's not what we need, so that's not good. So when you have good quality salt, sea salt, you really can't overdo it. And then getting a lot more potassium. Where does potassium come from? Potassium is in fresh, fresh fruits and vegetables. Potassium is in raw dairy. Um, potassium is in bone broth, okay? There's a lot of potassium in bone broth as well. Um, the fruits and vegetables that are the highest in potassium, coconut water, avocados, watermelon, um, and the ratio of sodium and potassium, I mean, I'm sorry, the ratio of carbohydrate and potassium and sodium and coconut water and watermelon juice is like ideal because all fruits and vegetables have potassium and have carbohydrates. Um, but if you take a banana, for example, banana has a lot more carbohydrates um, compared to the amount of potassium that's in it. Uh, whereas watermelon um, and coconut water has, you know, a lot less uh, carb car uh, carbohydrates compared to the amount of potassium that's in it. And it's actually a more ideal ratio. And so I find it interesting, you know, like the whole stereotype about black people in the, in the American South eating watermelon and it's looked at as like, you know, um, this ignorant thing and now black people sometimes don't want to eat watermelon. Shit, watermelon is one of the best things for hydration. And if you think about watermelon and uh, coconut, they're not super sweet. It's not like eating a mango or eating a super sweet banana. They're not super sweet, okay? They do have carbohydrates, but they have a lot more potassium per carbohydrate than does like a sweeter fruit like a pineapple or something like that. But if you're in the state of dehydration, you feel like you're about to pass out, you're getting dizzy, lightheaded, weak, while you're working out or while you're walking around in the heat, you want to get something that has um, sodium, potassium, carbohydrate. So grab any piece of fruit or fruit juice in that case. Anything is better than water. Regular water does not do anything for you when you are in a state of dehydration, okay? And also, if, you're just, if it's like a hot day and you're going to be out moving around or whatever and you're just drinking water all day, that's also not helpful, especially if you start like going outside and you're doing physical activity. Because you really need those, uh, the carbohydrates, but you need ones that will quickly raise your blood sugar. A lot of times um, in regular nutrition, 
um, carbohydrates with a high glycemic index, which are the ones that raise the blood sugar levels really fast, they're looked at as being not good for you. Because really, ideally, you don't want your blood sugar levels raising really fast in a normal situation, okay? And what can prevent that is fats, consuming your carbohydrates with fats, especially saturated fats. Um, but when you are about to engage in something really intense physically or in the middle of it or right when you're done, you do want carbohydrates that are going to spike the blood sugar levels really quickly so that your muscles can absorb them, okay? And you also need the carbohydrates to get the protein into your muscles as well. So this is all metabolism, a whole bunch of uh, metabolic um, equations, okay? But so for hydration, really important. If you're doing a really intense workout, it's a really hot day. You know, if I go take a really intense dance class, like I'm in a Haitian dance class, and it's super tough, you know, it makes you feel like you're going to choke to death, you know, and you're sweating, and you have to exert so much energy and go hard. In order to get through that, there's two things, three things. One, I really focus on my breathing, you know, really focus on, like, breathing to a science okay uh, that's really important because sometimes people start thinking so much they forget to breathe and breathe properly then I take sips of some coconut water or some watermelon juice I do not sip on water okay I remember when I was in high school we played and I played basketball and they would always tell us drink water drink water and we would drink water we would, get, we would have like the worst cramps and so none of us wanted to drink water so then you're like well, I don't want to drink water but really, we shouldn't have been drinking water. We should have been drinking, and not Gatorade, because Gatorade is crap. If you look at the amount of potassium in Gatorade compared to coconut water or watermelon juice, Gatorade, in the same serving of Gatorade and coconut water, you have like 60 milligrams of potassium in the Gatorade and like 700 in the coconut water and the watermelon juice, okay? And then the carbohydrates will be like, you know, something like 20, you know, um, grams or something in the coconut and or the watermelon and it would be like you know 30 something 40 something in a Gatorade so the ratio is awful and it barely has any potassium and Gatorade has artificial colors which are cancer causing and it has a bunch of other shit that is really not good for you and if you look at the ingredients of Gatorade and do your research uh, some people may not understand it because you don't have a scientific background but research the chemicals and the things that are in Gatorade. It's not good. It's not good for your overall health, okay? And it's not as efficient because it doesn't really hardly have any potassium. So, I mean, people have been doing intense work for, since, for hundreds of thousands of years on this planet. Way more intense than any of us are doing right now. And they live to be older than us and stronger than us. And you know what? They didn't have Gatorade or protein shakes or any of that, okay? They use real food. So, I am a sports nutritionist, but I believe in using real food. I am not into the protein powders and the, the nutrition bars and the sports drinks because not only is it not necessary, it's, not, it's also not the most efficient, and it's also bad for your overall health. So, if we can get things from nature that's actually more efficient, better for your overall health, then why not do that? Um, so I think I've said everything I need to say to you about hydration. I hope it makes sense. I hope you found this video helpful. And if so, please share it. And please join my YouTube page, The Body Scientist 81. And you can email me at the email address below, mboletta at thebodyscientist.com. And you can check out my blog, thebodyscientist.com. Thanks, people. Have a great day.